Hey y'all, welcome to Special Place Ranch. This is week two of the Ever Bit Counts Challenge. I'm in my greenhouse because it's windy today. Let me say about last week's video, I didn't think anybody'd watch it. I never have a whole lot of views on my videos and that video has more views than I've ever gotten before. I got a whole bunch of subscribers, so thank you so much for that. I will make sure and put things in the instructions for these canning recipes and not say, oh, I forgot and I'm too lazy to go get the book in the other room. So, sorry about that. I just didn't, you know, in fact, I told my husband, if nobody watches this first one, I'm not gonna bother editing the second one. So thank you all so much. And I invite y'all to watch my other videos. It is hot in here, so I'm gonna get out of the greenhouse and go do some more work. Look at the state of this spaghetti squash. Squash bugs everywhere, but there's damaged parts of it and then there's green fresh parts of it that are putting on more spaghetti squash. We've gotten about 25 to 30 spaghetti squash off of two plants, really. Way more than we need, but today's preservation project is to preserve the spaghetti squash, which means preserving seeds. The spaghetti squash itself is going to save for a long time. It's a winter squash, so it has a harder outside shell to it. So that way you can keep it over the winter. It's grown in the summer, but you can keep it for a long time. This was really hard to get through, harder than the last one we ate. But since this day I wanted an easy preservation project, I was just going to save seeds. And since I had to open this to get the seeds, we might as well use it for dinner. We had spaghetti with spaghetti squash noodles. If you've never had it before, they're kind of sweet and they do make a good substitute for noodles. Don't get me wrong, I do love some noodles. But I don't mind these as long as it's with meat sauce. Ain't no vegetarians in this house. So to cook this squash, you just cut it in half, scoop all the guts out, and then put a little oil on the inside of it and put it in a 450 degree oven for 45 minutes. As for the seeds, I got some big ones out, put them on a paper towel and let them dry for a couple days and then put them in a bag with the date and what they are on them. Carrots have been the bane of my existence to try to grow and last year in the springtime, I actually had some that made a decent size. Now they tasted horrible but I'm working on it. Usually we keep a bag of carrots and a bag of celery in the fridge for just fresh snacking or recipes and these were getting to be a little bit old. I had to cut a little bit more than just the edge off of some of them because they had a little brown. But anyway, I cut them into about quarter inch little medallions here. I'm just going to raw pack these carrots and I did get more carrots because I only had three jars that filled here so I didn't want to run the canner with just that. You can add a little bit of salt to it. I didn't to these. You just fill it with water and then I just give it a shimmy shake to get the bubbles out and then put the lid on on the finger tight and then put it in the pressure canner for 25 minutes for pints. I was dangerously low on mint extract and it takes two months to make this and I cannot be out for Christmassy time. So this is my garden in the backyard at the house. Notice my outfit is just perfectly matching. I am so good at clothes and stuff. Then you just want to rinse it off for any dirt, bugs, or dead leaves here. I'm pulling some dead leaves off of it. I've seen recipes that suggest about a cup of mint leaves to a cup and a half of whatever alcohol you're going to use. I just put a whole bunch of leaves in there. It's not going to hurt anything because it's an alcohol. I decided to get my salad spinner out to get them dry but you can pat them dry with a paper towel or a tea towel or whatever and then pull those leaves off and put them in whatever container. I would suggest a watertight container. I added vodka to the almost top of this container and that's why 
watertight's a good idea in case it gets knocked over. But I'm going to seal this up and put it in my cabinet where it is dark and cool. Then after two months, I'll strain out the leaves and bam, mint extract. Hatch chili season. If you know, you know. It's about a billion degrees outside and I didn't want to go back out there after farming all day. So I put my oven rack about six inches below the burners and then put it on broil, which is 500 degrees. I lined a baking sheet with foil just for easy cleanup. And then easiest thing in the world, you just line them up. Now these had been in the bag for a little bit, so I was checking to make sure nobody's disintegrating and juicy. A couple of them were on the ends, but we'll live. Then I put them under the broiler for five to 10 minutes per side. So this is after that first side and I just give them all a flip. You really want that char, that blistered skin on those chilies because it's going to make it easier to peel off and it's going to give it a little more flavor. I didn't slow down to show you up close, but that's a good char on there. Could have even been more charred. While those chilies are still hot, you want to put them in a bowl and then put plastic wrap over the top. That'll cause them to steam and then you can really get those skins to slide off of the chilies. You can buy hatch chilies in hot or mild. I bought both, but you can see how easy the skin is peeling off for me. A few of the spots that didn't get as charred are harder to get off. No big deal. I'm not canning these. I'm freezing them. So it's no big deal to have skin in there. It just doesn't taste the greatest. I'm again going to vacuum seal these so I got the bags ready and then cut these in about half inch squares. You can also de-seed these but I didn't care about seeds so I didn't bother. Usually I'll take the bags out and flatten them so they defrost easy and so they don't take up much space in the freezer. I was running low on apple butter as well, so I need to make a little bit more of that. These are apples that were on sale. I think they're the gala ones. And I'm using my little slicer core thing. Keeping the peels on because those peels contain pectin that helps set it up a little bit more. Then I grab my knife and cut these slices into about quarter inch cubes. And I'm using my crock pot here because it has to cook for a long time. This recipe uses about three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, a cup of brown sugar, and I like the dark brown sugar. I like the molasses taste. Uh, quarter teaspoon of salt, eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves, and a tablespoon of cinnamon. And nobody's going to tell on you if you use more cinnamon than that. My crock pot was kind of overflowing with apples, so I had to mix in another bowl and then just kind of try to mix this bowl and then combine them both. It's all going to cook down anyway so it'll get that flavor in there. This is going to cook for 10 hours on low. If you have a programmable one like I do, it'll go for 10 hours on low and then it'll be on the keep warm setting. In the morning I grab my immersion blender because again I don't want to wash all that other blender and stuff like that and just ran that. If you'll hold it at an angle it won't create the suction on the bottom and then you add some vanilla. The recipe I'm using called for a vanilla bean. I don't have that. I just have homemade vanilla so I put some in there and I ended up using the rest of that bottle. It doesn't say how much because it wants you to put a bean in there and things are expensive. Anyway, stir that around and then it's going to cook for another two hours to reduce and get a lot thicker. 
Now you can put this straight in the fridge if you want to. It is going to set up and get just a little bit thicker. Mine was kind of thin, but I'm okay with that. Whatever. While it's still hot, you want to fill your jars to a quarter inch headspace. I'm going to water bath can these. That is usually the best practice for jams because you don't want to mess up the pectin in your jams or fruit anything. As long as I can water bath can, it doesn't take as long as pressure canning, so I like to do that. These apple butters process for 10 minutes and then you leave it for 5 minutes and take them out to cool. I pulled the last of my frozen tomatoes out of my freezer because I was tired of dealing with them. I didn't want to peel them so I decided to make sauce. I just put these in my 2 quart roaster and put them on 150 overnight and the next day they look like this. In order to get the skins and the seeds out, I put it through my food mill. I love hate this machine because it barely fits on the bowl. This took about 45 years to complete, but I finally did it. The last of the juices after I removed the tomatoes was down here and I needed to strain all the seeds and crap out of it so I just put it on the strainer over a bowl. This was in the morning and we hadn't been to the farm yet so I put it back in the roaster, put it on 150 again and let it reduce. You want to reduce it by about a third. And don't forget to give the peels and seeds to your chickens. After it had been reduced by a third, I went ahead and filled my jars to a half inch headspace and I added a tablespoon of lemon juice. These will process in the pressure canner for 35 minutes. But then I had an idea. I'll make a chili base out of some of it because I had so much. Steve Ranella, the meat eater, makes a very good recipe for this chili and the main flavor in it is chilies and adobo. And I'm again not going to give you the full recipe because I don't know with copyright laws. If you'll go to the meateater.com and look up venison chili, that's what it is. But you can adapt this to whatever chili recipe you like. This is ancho chili powder. I also used oregano and cumin. Then I put about an onion's worth of onion in. This is from my garden that I just keep chopped and frozen in the freezer. And then I got some of the garlic I grew this year. I just peeled that and put them whole clove in the freezer because I was so tired of peeling garlic. It'll work. It'll take on that flavor. But mince it if you want to. Do chili however you do chili. Then I grabbed some of the jars of tomato sauce that I just did and hadn't canned yet. And I put about a pint and a half in each of them and left an inch for headspace. After I do that, I debubble, clean the rim, and then put the lid on, and I pressure can those for 90 minutes for quart jars. I'll be back next Wednesday with another week of the Everbit Counts Challenge, and this Sunday with a regular farm video. So make sure you're subscribed to see that. Thanks! If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I upload most Sundays, and you can keep watching us grow our farm. Have a good one.